Hey everyone, thanks for joining me today. We're going to be talking about medicine in the metaverse. Today I've got a special guest with me, Manny St. Victor. He's a psychiatrist turned virtual hypnotist and mindset coach. So thank you so much for coming on and just kind of sharing your expertise with me today, Dr. Manny. My pleasure. It's my pleasure to be here. <laughs> I, I checked out your website and you've You've had quite the interesting career, trained at Harvard, University of North Carolina, did a psychiatry residency, and then I saw that you also did a virtual world startup. Uh, you yeah. mind just kind of sharing a little bit about your kind of career so far, just because it's so unique from the usual path. Since I was nine, I've been addicted to computers. I started off learning basic and I was just fascinated at the concept of having my thoughts outside my mind, but beyond that, active, where people could interact with them. And uh, I thought I wanted to be a brain surgeon because I thought brain surgery would actually involve cutting thoughts, you know, like being a thought mechanic. Uh, increasingly, I realized that wasn't it, so I ended up uh, doing psychiatry. Ultimately, uh, when I went to my psychiatry uh, uh, residency, it was with the intention of uh, applying psychiatry to virtual worlds to social media. And at the time it was around 2007. So Facebook wasn't Facebook as we know it. So uh, uh, the direction we were going mainly at the time was uh, EMRs and stuff. And I was like, that's not really my thing. I had been doing work in game, develop game development, etc. So I joined a virtual world startup. Uh, we we're supposed to be building at the time, the, the investment was for building a virtual world, a sports-themed virtual world for kids. Uh, the goal was to make it healthy, engaging, you know, none of, the, none of the negative side effects that you see a lot of the social platforms doing now. Um, we burned through three, million, three and a half million in six months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so they had flown me in. They had paid for me to relocate me and 11 other developers, artists, directors, etc. And that went belly up. So uh, I had resigned from my residency in hopes of in the virtual world, you know, getting my education. And then my intention was to come back. And after I had demonstrated all that uh, we can do in virtual, uh, not so much. So then I joined uh, the development team at WebMD. I think I was there uh, around 2010. And after that, I uh, took on various software roles, mainly consulting, because I had been consulting since, uh, wow, 1999, I had started uh, doing sites and stuff. So uh, in terms of the virtual reality, I became, ever since we started doing the, uh, the isometric worlds, that worlds that kind of look 3D, it, it just, it was obvious that that was the direction. Uh, the easier they made it to make 3D games and the more powerful the software got, the more it became uh, clear that people were identifying within these games to the point where uh, it's affecting, obviously, their moods. Uh, it was opportunities to practice. People were developing expertise. Uh, the guys that I was uh, collaborating with in the games, I saw increasingly uh, they were putting people in immersive environments for education, military training, uh, you know, preparing patients for, for experiences, flight training. You know, We all grew up playing flight simulator, but... Uh, the field has moved to allow other, a lot of other contexts to use that. So uh, as I see it, it's, it's time for us to bring medicine to people in that immersive way. Just as everyone else moves to the environment, I think we in medicine, sometimes we've been hesitant to move to different places. I think we need to be out there early so that uh, a lot of us can develop comfort expertise and expertise in the field and be basically virtual reality nativists, you know, just be there, you know, I don't know if that's the word, but be there early enough so that uh, everyone else isn't bringing us in for authority. Because I remember with the internet, uh, when docs were trying to get in on it, a lot of us were kind of, you know, they were kind of looking at us as victims to be taken, overpriced sites, et cetera. But when you get into the ground level, you get an understanding of the culture in there. And so it's not just trying to replicate your clinic in VR, it's understanding the, the needs in the VR environment and how that can be useful to people. How, how can we get people more engaged? How we can uh, we let people bring more of their information so that, say, they come in and you guys will have their minority report chart up. You know, you can look at it together. Whatever it is that will add the most value. And I think it's important for us to get in early enough 
where we understand where it's going and we're creating not just for show and not uh, having other other industries point things to us kind of secondhand after it's interesting and tell us this is the way to do it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think with your, you know, your perspective with all this development on the software side and also as being a clinician, I think it gives you a unique perspective on, you know, what, what does a, a clinic in sort of virtual reality or metaverse, like what, sh what should it look like, do you think? What did one of the mistakes we made uh, with Web 2.0, I started out uh, with the software. I started out with ActionScript. I don't know if you remember the Flash era. Some people called it the skip intro era <laughs> because uh, the direction a lot of companies went is they dumped a lot of money into special effects, you know, make your site 3D, et cetera. That was the wrong way to go uh, because no matter how pretty, how cool it was, a lot of companies made the mistake of making it entertaining instead of useful. I think one of the key things uh, for a clinic in the metaverse is for us to not be focused on the wow effect. Oh, be so caught up in making it look realistic, uh, you know, gamifying it, et cetera, but creating an environment where you, you feel that rapport. You feel like the doctor is there with you, you know, and particularly if you're somewhere where you couldn't get access to the doctor, maybe in that environment, we can share data. You know, as I mentioned before, you, you pull up the chart and it's there. You know, another example would be, um, Another opportunity would be, say, you're working with a patient, talking to them about health and stuff. In virtual reality, you can pull up a model of the person. That's not that hard to do. And you can show them what they would look like 10 pounds heavier at the right BMI. You know, you can point to these parts and say, this is where you're hurting. Let's let's look at your, at your you know, your uh, we got your scans. This is what it looks like. Let's turn you around. Let's show you what the, you know, it's just uh, the amount of uh, immersion we can do with people in that space and uh, the fact that we'd be com communicating with them either from home or from the clinic and bringing them into these spaces where they can see what's going on, uh, even beyond education, it allows them to be, feel like they have more of a stake in their health. Something as simple as with the Oculus now, it tells you how long you're in there every day and how many energy units you're using. And so each day they make that worthwhile. Now, if your patients could hop in there <laughs> and <laughs> you know, you're like, well, let's see how you did. Okay. Let, you know, and uh, especially Apple's getting into the uh, VR game and their headset is going to be right around the 2000 range. The resolution is going to be pretty high. Uh, so the opportunity there is, you know, physician in there, high quality with a group of people, you know, and so your clinic can be larger and you could do group care while maintaining HIPAA and everyone's in there keeping up, you know, the same way they're doing right now, I think Supernatural has come in, Supernatural has people working out because you feel like you're with the coach. You know, another example is there's uh, an accessory called the mirror. <laughs> it's a super expensive mirror <laughs> where as you're looking at it, the, the coach is in there with you working out sort of embedded in there. These are the things where we don't want to go in the direction of building what we imagine, uh, what the doctor thinks would be the best clinic. We want to make sure that we're bringing in the information that people find most useful. We're, we're, making it more interesting to be in there. You know, I think uh, the more we can make, me feel, make people feel as if this is a space where their curiosity about their illness could be fulfilled and beyond illness, their curiosity about their wellness can be fulfilled. You know, uh, we have the opportunity to have all kinds of biometrics in that space and to have it at hand with the doc. You know, when you're saying to someone, okay, this is what you're going to look like if if you keep eating like this, you know, this, this is how your lungs look now. Let's zoom in on a lung together, <laughs> you know, and it's just, there's something about being able to just have that in space or maybe, you know, you, you look at the person and you have them looking in a mirror of sorts in virtual and their x-ray is overlaid over them and you're pointing to them in the first person. You know, we're going to do the incision here. We're going to, this is where this, that is. And this prepares people differently. You know, this, this is a different experience from uh, seeing someone else in it, first of all. Uh, it's a different experience from uh, someone telling you about some pictures, et cetera, because when you're seeing something on yourself in a mirror, there's, uh, they've done a lot of studies on future self. And what they found is one of the best ways to get people to eat better, to save money better, to just do these various things is to simply have them meet an aged version of themselves. 
you have them in a mirror and you basically use a simulation where they meet an aged version of themselves and you know they they have a conversation with that aged version aged version and coming out of there then your your future self is no longer a stranger you know and, and yeah and then so the behavior changes entirely uh something as simple as saying to a, a patient this is where you are this is where you'll be healthy you know and simple things i don't know if you've seen some of the deep fakes uh pretty convincing <laughs> you know something as simple as showing someone themselves dancing makes it more real you know See, look at you dancing, uh, and we can see in this diagram, you see the amount of pressure you're putting on your bones. You see the damage. You see where you are now. This is you lighter. You know, this is, you know, the treadmill in the clinic. This is, you know, it just, there's a lot of things that uh, we see other companies doing that we need to be reaching in on. There's no reason that you couldn't have a physician on Peloton, you know? <laughs> so you hop on your bike, you're in there with the doc. You know, and now uh, when you look at Facebook's Oculus code, there's a whole bunch of new body scanning stuff in there now with cameras where they'll be scanning you in. Uh, you can make sure people are doing the exercises properly. You can see where someone is truly hurting at home. You know, where even we got a chance to see telemedicine move forward uh, due to the pandemic where we were hesitant with Zoom before. We weren't we weren't convinced that that was an okay way to go until the plague, you know? <laughs> Then we were like, okay, I don't need people in the room with me. And I think it's important for us to jump ahead and realize that as more of the culture comes to identify with being in this virtual space, you know, uh, we don't want to be there judging them. Oh, these kids don't have eye contact. Okay. If these kids are having less eye contact, how can we be where they are and help them with the health? How can we be there with this generation where they live? Yeah. And I, I know a lot of the population have had the experience of doing medical visits over telemedicine at this point. I mean, what do you think the mm -hmm. sort of the big advantages of having this immersive virtual reality experiences over just telemedicine over Zoom? Yeah, yeah. It, you, they don't have to show up there. And it's more immersive. If you have someone in the VR room, then there's several people in the room with them. Yeah. And uh, the way the technology is going, it's not that much further from bringing a whole person into the room and they'll be at home and you'll be able, you'll be able to look around them. You'll be able to check from an angle. If you want them to do say a stretch or something, if it's, you know, if they have sciatica, they don't have to come all the way to the office to do the leg swing or they don't have to come and tell you how they're doing the leg swing. Yeah. <laughs> you can, you can, they can, you, you could be down in their space and you could watch them do the leg swing from various angles. Uh, as the technology moves forward, uh, even with the latest of Oculus, you're able to see the person just by putting your phone in one space and using the Oculus app, you're able to see the person immersed in the environment. So what the person can see is an experience with you there. And again, a lot of uh, people's experiences have to do with how much they can see themselves in there. If they're in there and they see a clinic, you know, and they see you talking to them and the clinic is in their home, then you have the impact of the clinic, you know, context is there. So the person is in that mindset. When we're sitting here, I'm still at home. I'm still at home telling you, you know, I have a pain here and there. A lot of the uh, ritual involved in medicine that makes medicine so powerful, we need to move that into the space. You know, there's, the, there's a way a hospital feels that a person goes into the hospital, you know, they wait in the waiting room. We can minimize the wait in the waiting room because we pop right in, we can go across rooms. And, you know, the person has the VR, they're in this clinic. The clinic could be more spacious. <laughs> you know, the clinic could be cleaner. The clinic doesn't smell like the clinic. They don't have to hear people all down the hall. You know, they don't have to leave their home in pain, but you bring that immersive experience. You know, it's here, but still I can get uh, the medical experience. Medical clinic could be as simple as, you know, a 3D white room. <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be, oh, let me make them walk through the hospital. These are the mistakes that we made in Web 2.0 initially with Flash. You know, people come to the site, we want to wow them. They zoom in. We got fireworks. We got physics. That's not the purpose. The technology is, you know, you want to go to the bare minimum. You want a clinic, you put someone in a room that feels like a clinic. You know, they look, they see the cabinets. Uh, if they're sitting in their chair... You have it looking like, you know, the vantage point is sitting VR is, you know, already they have stationary where they sit on their couch at home and you have it look like they're sitting there with you. 
and you're walking around them, you know, simple, all, it's as simple as having uh, a, a, even a medical dummy with a 3D cam. And they have something called the owl now, where the owl follows you where you walk. You know, so as simple as having the patient, you know, you're walking around them and they have that immersive experience. They have the value of feeling like they went to the doctor. Ultimately, people are paying for these feelings. You know, if the doc could be in there with you and have a conversation, he's not rushed. You know, <laughs> he came in there, he's not running down the hall. He's, he pops in his room and he's click, click, click. You know, the data is in there. There's less paperwork to fill out because as you're talking, the person is providing the data, you know, with you there. They get to the point where they know their way around in there. All their data is in there with you. It, it, it accelerates the stuff. And ultimately, we don't want to look at the aesthetics we want to look at the functionality. We want to create these minimal viable products that are serving the audience and that get agile. You, you, how, how can my clinic look so that my people enjoy being there? You know, the same way people are A-B testing uh, websites, <laughs> you know, you can have your clinic. Okay, my people like a clinic where, you know, there's a lot of space. My claustrophobic people don't like the tight clinic. You know, my people who don't like to ride elevators my people who can't come up the stairs, my people who can't afford the bus, you know, and as the price of these technologies go down, uh, they become more accessible. You know, you look at how Verizon has made iPads accessible, accessible at 30 bucks a month now. You know, you think uh, an iPad used to be a G and something, quote, only rich people had. You know, we'll, we'll be able to do that with, with the VR technology. You know, eventually it'll be the telephone. And our, as physicians, we need to have been there watching the evolution so that we're not coming in making the mistakes that the same way people made mistakes in web 2.0 because someone else is walking us through it we want to watch it evolve we want to watch the mistakes we want to learn the way to communicate there the way to brand there the way people perceive us there how to be in the metaverse if there's a land grab maybe we need to be land grabbing some some spaces to have clinics you know if they're building whatever people are in you know and it's kind of Weird with Facebook because some people are like, yeah, yeah, the whole concept of running out of land in virtual reality is not really making sense. But if it does, then so be it. If doctors need to be having clinics as NFTs, you know, <laughs> so that, uh, you know, uh, it could be your unique value, your branded clinic in that space. You know? And people come in, they visit, and the real estate appreciates the same way it would if you had a, a building that was a clinic. If that's the direction we're headed, we all need to be in there for the financial reasons authority reasons for the the rapport and relationship we need to be there we don't need to be there clumsy and then just yeah. from like a technical perspective how hard is it to do this to build out these minimal viable products of clinics stuff's being done stuff's being done because what has happened with there's certain platforms like the unity engine uh Unity is a 3d game engine that has made it that a mom and pop, you know, a daddy and son can put out games and make a bunch of money. Uh, what Unity comes with is already rooms. Uh, anything that you would imagine someone needing for a first person shooter, you can drop into Unity and you already have all that. All you got to do is customize it. So what that provides is a lot of the physics you would need. So uh, right now there's sites like um, that sell what are called 3DS files. So you go and you grab a hotel model, like a hospital model, you know, or if you want a, a wellness center, you grab a wellness center model, a room, you know, and it's just four meshes. You grab the room and you pull the person in there. And then from there, it's a matter of, well, what's the workflow? You know, VR has already the structure for narratives. So you can have a video where you walk in. So you don't have to walk in every time. That's, you play the video where you walk in. And then from there, you know, the whole intro, um, you know, uh, and the AI is embedded in the software now. Yeah. So the deep learning, any data that you're putting into the cloud, so to speak, Apple, even Apple's uh, machine language on the phone is already analyzing the data. So the biometrics and everything, you're, we're not that far from whenever you have someone on this thing, if they have their watch on, you get the data you need. You know, increasingly, this stuff is moving so fast that it, it's beyond sci-fi. You know, they say six months on the internet is like 10 years elsewhere, you know? So 
as soon as someone decides that something needs to be done, somebody figures out how to do it. You know, and, and other industries are doing it already. The military training is way out there. There's not, uh, there's no reason why we can't jump in and use what's already being used elsewhere with precision, you know, and, and just jump in. The technology is here already. Yeah, it's not hard. Not hard. You know, look at the quality of these games now. Look at these games are pumping out. Like, look at your standard, uh, how many of, and the standard games on the phone now that you can play. And look, at, there's a full world in there. That's all data. That's all data. Those those uh, NP, NPCs, the non-player characters, the artificial intelligence is to the point where these guys are outsmarting you based off deep learning on your phone. Why can't we take that same deep learning and be like, well, based off, uh, you know, we got your heart rate variability. It looks like you're losing resilience. <laughs> you know, we've been tracking you and... Uh, the data has found this variable, latent variable that none of us thought of. The data has pointed out that the more of you guys that show up with this variable, the more often you guys are having strokes. You know, we don't know the data that we don't know. But as we collect all this data, then then this is where the, the meta analyses are what will allow us to have these insights that we couldn't have when we had a limited amount of stuff that we were getting on EMR because that's what we expected and needed from. Get all the biometrics. And let's see what the data, the smart machine <laughs> tells us it notices. Let's get these trends and make, you know, let's, let's not get caught up in trying to make medicine do what everyone else runs ahead and does. And let's just jump into the bioinformatics and let's apply it in this context so that each of us can have our unique set of ideas because it's not that expensive, not that difficult. And basically we got high school level kids creating 3D graphics now. So let's let's get let's get in there. It's 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 ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I think the main thing is uh, to not try to not go in there with preconceived notions, you know, and not go in there expecting it to be immediate or magic, and to not get taken. <laughs> you know, don't don't let someone sell you a dream because anyone can go up to you and be like, well, we could build this, that, and the other. Look to see what they've built already because there are companies out there building medical training. Now I've got buddies of mine who have built uh, training for like naval facilities where they're doing training that precise in there. So don't jump in and assume that you could build the biggest thing ever. One of the biggest mistakes we made in the game industry when we were developing was take, biting off more than we could chew. Everyone was trying to build an RPG, et cetera, come to realize the real money was in Angry Birds, <laughs> you know, flinging a bird across the way made a mint. You know, uh, I had a buddy, uh, uh, I helped develop an app called Flare back on Facebook. It was just buttons. You know, everyone was trying to build the next city bill, the next farm bill. My buddy was making a mint with these, these buttons. <laughs> it was just buttons that said silly things. We want to come in there uh, and Ask yourself, as an expert in whatever field you are, how can I add value in this space? With me, I'm going in there with, with virtual hypnosis, virtual hyp hypnotherapy, because linguistics carries across all contexts. You know, someone can sit in that space with me and I can watch them move. They can watch me move. We could build rapport. You know, we could tell jokes. We can watch a movie together and discuss it. Uh, and hypnosis travels across everything, you know? <laughs> So I can provide those resources there, but I'm not going to try to, I'm not going to try to overdo it. All I need is them and me sitting on a, on a hypno couch like I'm Freud, you know, 3D couch. That's it. Make the rest of the space dark or make space light or, or put a sun out there. Each person needs to ask themselves, what does my audience need? Get to know your audience as an expert. Brand yourself. You know, don't, as physicians, we need to decommoditize ourselves. You know, we need to each find the niche where people need us specifically, you know, you specifically, me specifically, and then figure out the problem we're each solving. What's the value of it? You know, how can we let people know I do this thing and I can do it for you anywhere in the world through my VR? You know, find me for this thing. Don't, don't try to do what everyone else is doing. 
Don't try to make it big and grand. Don't, don't try to make your clinic look super expensive, whatever. Figure out what your people want and build that. That's the nature of an MVP, you know, a minimal viable product. It's find what your people want. Build it so skinny that when they say, no, nah, I don't like this part, change it like this, you, you make the adjustments that your people want. You don't build a bunch of stuff out, you know. It's not, it's not, it's not, if you build it, they will come, you know, you build out. Uh, and you know, even now when we're building a course out, the, the recommendation is you build out two weeks of your online course, get the feedback, and then you build a couple more weeks, you know, you stay about two weeks ahead. Cause if you build the whole course and after week one, people are like this sucks, you've lost, you know, millions, you know, <laughs> server space, hosting, design, production. Yeah. It's the same thing with, with, with VR come in with the basic. Tell people, come on in here. Uh, you know, you got your beta testers, your your most loyal patients. Have them come in, get their feedback, expand the services based on what they need. That's that's the key thing. Uh, don't try to impress anyone. Try to get the results for your people in your lane of expertise. Yeah, that's it's key. It's key. And then it's just always. Always, because now we have uh, the long tail opportunities now. You know, let the big companies go after the stuff that billions of people want. Let them be Facebook. Yeah. Nowadays, the money isn't in launching in terms of on the on social uh, social platforms. The money isn't trying to launch the next Facebook. The money is launching a network for people who like My Little Pony on Tuesdays. You know, <laughs> who only on Tuesdays. So every Tuesday they can access the app. You know, people are looking for that level of someone out there is like me. Someone out there understands me. And they'll Google it up until they find that person, see if their friends like it too for the social proof, and they'll jump in. And what we need to do is be digging deeper. And like, from what I understand, I think Russell Brunson says that you need to go three levels deep. One of the main levels, I think there's finance, relationships, uh, self-improvement, and spirituality. I think your health and spirituality, you know? So those are the four main markets, but they say that you gotta keep going deeper and deeper to the markets, you know? It's not just good enough to be health. We have the opportunity to go from health down to cardio, to x-ray, to whichever. Then even deeper, we have the opportunity to be like for elderly. For, honestly, a lot of people can be like for uh, those who can't afford it and the government is funding it. For those who are rich and only want to be associated, you know? You can go deeper and deeper into these niches by the fact that we're able to um, be agile with our development. You keep asking your audience, what do you want? And you'll find, they say you need a thousand people for your business to succeed. A thousand committed fans. And the way you get a thousand committed people is you listen over and over so that your expertise comes through as a signal so clear in whatever the platform is. And the platform not happens to be virtual reality, but the same rules apply. That's great advice. Well, uh, thank you so yeah. much, Dr. Manny. That was really illuminating to kind of hear your, your perspective on all this. Yeah. And I'm always open to discuss it. If, if there's certain aspects, I geek about this stuff because I've been excited about it for a couple of decades and having it here now, it's finally, it's finally. So you know, if there's more specific stuff that you would like me to answer questions about or if anyone in your audience has uh, specific questions, whether it's about development, uh, uh, user experience, uh, some of the business models coming up. I'm open to discuss any of those aspects because I know I sort of did a helicopter view in geek mode. So um, I'm open to answer any questions if anyone wants to reach out to me.